right, let's go. So I'm going to be working on the Open Playground web application, which helps people to experiment with and compare large language models. So one thing which I've been wanting to play around with for a little while is a much better text editing experience here. This, uh, this is your basic HTML text area element and I've been playing around as you can see with some content in here and generating suggestions from some lang large language model providers and that's all good fun but this editing and reading experience is pretty bad. So of course I could improve the font here and maybe I will do that for the upcoming release but I thought I'd take some time this morning to experiment with this library, Prose Mirror. So I'm going to treat myself to a little test of this and see how hard it will be to integrate into the Open Playground web application. Uh, if it turns out to be pretty simple, then we'll get this in ASAP and have a much uh, richer editing and reading experience here. But if not, then it's just uh, a bit of fun and a bit of uh, preparation for this as a future feature. So let's do it. So I think I'm going to create a, uh, a repository just for testing this out. So let's, let's get to that. So I'm going to open up my terminal, go into my development area and let's, uh, let's uh, make prose mirror test. Okay, now I'm going to set up this little front end app using Vite. We're using that for the Open Playground app, so I want the same basic setup and I, I'm really liking using this. So I'm going to follow their quick start guide and uh, get this environment set up. So I'm going to be doing uh, vanilla TypeScript. What's this taking me to? I want that. I've got this. I've got this. How do I install or set up from a template? Is it going to be in my history at all? Um, feet. Yes. Uh, this is the command I want. It's going to be. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to just remove that uh, folder I just created. Search my history for this command I'm looking for. Prose mirror test using the vanilla TypeScript template. Let's see. Vanilla TypeScript. Good, so now I should be able to go into Prose Mirror, npm start. Now I need to do npm install. And in the meantime, I'm going to open that up in my VS Code, Prose Mirror Test. So this will just have some example source code in here. So that's run. I can now switch to the using terminal in here. Um, it says run dev. And here's the example. So there you go. Now, first thing I'm going to do going to go to the package.json. I like um, my script to be start. So then I can just do npm start. Yeah, there you go. So now we're going to get, uh, get this uh, example cleared of this 
initial material and try and get some basic prose mirror examples in there. So let's get rid of some of this material. Don't need the counter. Don't need this. Main is just going to not do anything for now. And the title test. And we'll just say hello here. See that everything's as expected. And here we go. Hello. There we are. Right, so let's have a look at this prose mirror documentation then. So, I definitely want a markdown formatting. That would be great. Um, let's just do the basic thing here. So, setting up a full editor from scratch requires that. That's why we're using this. Prose mirror example setup package. That looks like what I want. And I should get this. So I suppose I clone that repository and then paste this in to my my main TypeScript file. That's what I'm thinking is going to be the case here. So this is what they link to, prose mirror example setup. Mm -hmm. So is this an example to look at or is this an example to import? Let's have a look at the... So it's importing from these various libraries which I suppose I need to npm install. So, documentation, library guide, central modules, not seeing anything about installation yet. Just usage. Okay. Prose mirror state, prose mirror view. So where are those? Are they in the prose mirror? Yeah, so prose mirror state. Okay, doesn't seem to have any uh, NPM. I'm just going to check whether there's a NPM prose mirror. Deprecated. All right, let's uh, please install modules like. Okay, I'm just going to clone them, I suppose. Strange as it is these days. Let's try it. This is what this session is about. So I'll have the the state module. I'll have the view module. 
model schema basic and let's do example setup as well pros mirror example setup and see if we get anywhere with this so now I have all these modules and now let me see if I uh, just copy this code into my main TypeScript file. So that's going to be yeah. This is surely not how it's supposed to be set up, but uh, pros mirror state. We're importing editor state from it, and that is exported by the index file. So, I'm uh, yes. So, out of the source. There we go. That's that's registering. So I'm going to amend these paths, assuming it's all the same. These are complaining. Schema is exported from. Yeah, see, this isn't going to work because this uh, this depends on this existing in the the global path, if you like. So these do need to be npm installed, but I'm surprised as to why. So uh, can I do uh, npm install from git? You can do that. So I'm going to try it. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to undo this work and now I'm going to remove all those files again and then I'm going to try to npm install them straight from git so they're all gone now and now so the first one was state module. So I'm going to do npm install git plus that. See if this works. What can we be doing in the meantime? An error here. So we'll need yeah we'll need a, a container to inject this into. So let's create that. So this will be what's this a copilot suggesting that and I like that. So this is finished installing. Let's see if uh, the error's gone away. Aren't they good? So I think we're on the right lines here. So do the same thing for. Interestingly, it looks like we've now got pros, mirror, view, and model. So let's go straight to schema basic npm install git plus that. And we are going to have our editor container, is it's got the ID container, we've got a TypeScript error because this could be null, and let's say it definitely will exist, so I can put the exclamation mark. Final thing, we are we're missing a couple more of these. So pros mirror schema list. And 
can I install the example setup or is that to be is that to be cloned? Seems less like something you'd have as a package. But so, yeah, there, there we go. Is this error going to go away? Yep. So I think we're good. Now the final thing is this. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what our uh, our page looks like now. Oh wow! So something's happening. So what can we do about this? First of all, property view does not exist on. Do we need to do that? Can we not just do editor view? Have we got any errors? No errors. So what's going on here then? So, well, let's start to understand what's going on here. So we're we're creating a schema, which is Prose Mirror's way of, I suppose, defining the type of data model or what kind of HTML can be rendered in the editor and, and so on. So I'm assuming that's all good. And then we are, ah, I think this is assuming that there's going to be a, there's going to be a, it's going to be a editor container and then a content container. I'm just going to create those as separate variables. So we'll have that and we'll have content container and then that'll be the editor container. This will be the content container. Now let's see what we have. Nothing because I haven't created that content container. So does it go inside? That looks strange. What about this? No better, no errors. Is it because of the, the layout that I've got? Let me just uh, remove all the CSS we have. Hmm, this is still... Uh, still quite strange. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to the prose mirror documentation. So there could be problems with the example setup. Is this the most basic of all examples? So we create an editor view. Editor, we create the state. Okay, and the plugin is the example setup. So, what happens if we move that plugin? We don't get anything. So, what's that example setup doing? Let's find it. Example setup. So it's importing various things from Prose Mirror and the setup is defining the schema key bindings, 
menu, history. Things I shouldn't need, I think, to just get started. What about just an empty basic editor with no add-ons? <clears throat> Let's see some other examples or introduction. View. Okay, this is the minimal editor. This. Don't need the schema. All right, let's see what will happen here. Still failed to load. Four oh four for Vite SVG. We don't need that. Where's that being referred to? In the index HTML, yes. We don't need that. Okay. We don't need the the favicon stuff. Where is that happening? Where is that being referred to? What's in here? I can't see anywhere where that's being referred to. I'd prefer it if we could get rid of that error though. There's nothing about the icon in there. Very strange. I've tried restarting this. All right, we won't worry about it. I'm assuming it's not blocking. Right then, back to the the editor. So let's have a look at the code for the editor view, which I've just gone to the definition for. So I've got this editor view class, and it wants a uh, place where the editor sh should be appended to. So it's trying to put that in the body. Let's put that in the uh, editor container. Yeah, still nothing. Let's go back to the documentation. So this creates a very, very minimal editor. Well, I'm surprised. That we haven't got anything showing up here. 
let's uh, have a look what's actually being created. So if I look at the elements on the page, in the app, in the editor. So something is being created, but it has no height. I suppose that's why. Let's just give it a, let's just make this, this taller and maybe we'll, well, there's no actual, okay, no, there's a div of content editable. Let's give it a height. So, let's uh, go to our style sheet, which I will now import. Import style sheet. This is all the, the stuff that comes default with Vt, and I'm just going to leave it. Um, <coughs> makes things look mildly better. So let's give the editor some height. Will this make a difference? Ah, oh, we have an editable. Here we go. All right, let's say uh, 300 pixels. That doesn't, doesn't make a difference. How about the, uh, the pros? mirror class. Okay, now we're talking. All right. Let's give it a border as well so that we can see. Okay. I'm not so sure about this alignment that Vita's given us. Basically, let's uh the place item center, we get rid of that. Now it's back up there. Um, what else is causing this? App, text align center. It's this padding, nope. Okay. All right, so let's get rid of that padding. What's that? Do we need any, any padding at all? We'll give the editor some padding. We'll give this some padding as well. Good. All right. Okay, we have an editor. This is progress. So now, what's next? So this isn't very useful yet. If you press enter, for example, nothing happens. So let's let's just verify that. Yeah, nothing happens. So got a few concepts here to to understand. When the user types or otherwise interacts with a view, it generates state transactions. What that means is that it does not just modify the document in place. It causes a transaction. This is this, this is great. This is why you use a library for an editor because managing the state of a content editable HTML element is very tricky. There are many, many cases to cover. I've tried it and this is why I'm looking to a library like this to, to manage updating the state and giving me back a clean data model that I can use in my code. So this is all about, this is what we think about as the state. So we've got a, an argument we can pass to the editor, which is dispatch transaction. Okay. So if I, if I, if I add this, this is going to, um, console 
log the change that's taken place. So if I, I should now be able to type in my editor and see some updates in my console. So hello, this is a message. And each time the input changes, we're getting this transaction being triggered. And this is this dispatch transaction method, which we are defining here. So I'm liking this so far. All right, let's keep going. So I know that this is a very plugin oriented library, this prose mirror, you have everything you have, you know, history, key bindings, keyboard shortcuts, they're all assignable through these plugins. So I mean, I could just follow this along, I could add this history, I don't see why we wouldn't want history in the editor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just copy and paste these in. And uh, see if it's working for me. So I want those. Um, looks like the, we already have these as part of the original installation. So why am I getting a type error there? Because I'm redefining it, of course. So now we're defining the state as editor state with, I suppose this is the default schema and these plugins and so now we should have a control Z behavior. So let's test that. Do hello, control Z, that's uh, control, control Y to read it. That's great. It's already a big improvement over, over the raw text editor, which I have in the open playground app, which I just, just, uh, bring that up again, actually, uh, I haven't got it running. So um, I'm going to create another instance of VS code. And I'm going to open up the open playground application, <clears throat> which this is the focus. This is why we're working on an editor. It's because we want to get a great editing, editing experience coming in to this application. So this is my open playground application. Um, and I, I want a really nice rich editor here. This is currently just a text area. Very, very raw. So we're doing our prose mirror test because we're going to get a really nice rich editor here. <clears throat> that's going to be easy to manage, hopefully. So onwards, undo and redo. These are commands. This is fine. Looks like I can, there are other basic editing commands coming from here. I guess that'll be things like control B for bold and so on. So I'm just going to keep rolling with this, this tutorial and adding these bits and bobs because these all seem like basic things that you'd want in an editor. So this is another plugin the uh, base key map. So let's see what we have now. I can do a line, I can press enter and get a new line. I can do control Z to go back. Yeah, this is this is good. What about uh, bold? So this is no, no, we don't have any richness at the moment. I'm just going to remove that this this uh, unnecessary padding on the on the paragraph, yeah, yeah. I I, I want the, the text to start, you know, here. Uh, looks like our paragraph element has quite a lot of margin on it. So if I were to, if I go to my style sheet for the paragraph elements, well, maybe we're not setting it anywhere in here. Maybe that's just default. Hmm. Margin. What if I say 
Well, if I take off the padding for the, the prose mirror element, yeah, see, I don't like that, and I, 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 I prefer this. So, what is it I need to remove? Is it the the, the margin on the padding on the sorry on the paragraph? Yeah, okay. So paragraph margin top zero. There we go. That's how I want it for now. Right, let's keep rolling. After this point, you basically have a working editor, yeah, I'll say. Now, I don't need a menu and all kinds of things. I just really want a basic editor for now. However, I do want some rich text capabilities because I want to be able to run the, for example, in my playground here, I want to be able to, to create a prompt and when I trigger a suggestion, this is fetching a suggestion from Cohere, large language model provider, and it's going to append that suggestion to the text area, but I want it to be rendered in a either bold or highlighted so that it's clear what's produced by the computer and what's produced by the user. And this is taking a, an awful long time to run. Oh, it's there. Oh, it's because we're asking for many, many tokens. Wow. Let's try that again. 30 tokens. There we go. That's exactly what we want. So I want this to be rendered in bold. And I'm hoping Prose Mirror is going to make that really easy for me to do. That's my hope. So keep rolling with this. States document lives under its doc property. Yeah, this is the actual HTML that it uses to render the content of the editor on the screen. So I don't think I need to be messing with that. You can just specify which element that appears in. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Yes. So, prose mirror document is a node. Okay. This will make sense. Let's just identity and persistence. Objects behave so I'm interested in the type of data structure that I have to feed it and get back from it that's the next key thing So this seems to be related to the schema idea. Okay, to programmatically create nodes, you must go through the schema. So I think when I want to render this in bold, I'm going to be creating a node. So I need to get rid of some tabs here. Right. Good. Okay. And so the schema says what attributes can exist? Schema dot. Okay, no, this is like specifying a, an initial document. I see.
just going to skim this. I think all of these things are going to become relevant at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, I'm understanding this. You have to mutate the the document object and not the Yeah, I'm not going to be directly mutating any of the actual HTML that the library is rendering. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Each node in the document has a type. And you can define the node types that may occur in your document. So this is saying that the, the doc can have paragraphs. A paragraph node can exist. This is like a, a, a hierarchy. So the docs can have paragraphs, can have texts in them. So, okay, we'll roll with that. Suppose this is good. It means that we can't. We can say you can't copy an image in there. It's just text and so on. And maybe we can have a different node type, which is the like a suggestion node type, and that looks a different way, or so on. So maybe we'll get to that. So all right. I think this is. All fairly extra detail for now. What are marks? Marks are used to add extra style. Yeah, this is this is what I'm I'm interested in. Marks are used to add extra styling or other information to content. Okay. So is this this marks? Is this saying that? If you write that mark somewhere, is that going to change the style? A set of marks is interpreted space separated string of mark names. Hmm. I suppose we'll get to that. Halfway through these docs now. Okay. Serialization and parsing, this is the data stuff that I was interested in. In order to be able to edit them in the browser, it must be possible to represent document nodes. The easiest way is to include information about the node's representation in the schema. Like, okay. This makes sense. So I can have a I can have a node type which is normal text. And that just is like that, you know, the DOM representation is just a paragraph element. And then I can have a suggestion node, which renders in a, in a, in a bold element or highlighted span or something like that. So, but how do I pass data to it? That's what I want to see. Updates to documents are decomposed into steps. So yeah, replace step to replace a piece of a document or add a mark step. These are things I want to do because I want to be able to progr programmatically insert content into here and render it based on what kind of metadata is associated with it. For example, this is normal text and this is suggested by the machine. So that that's going to be a different type of node and that will be in something like an add mark step, I believe. We're going to try all these things very soon. transforms hmm 
mapping. Interesting. So I want to. It might be good to know the positions of the various elements in here because if I know that this came from the machine, I might even want to be able to hover over it and have some kind of action or not or information. I suppose knowing the positions of things might. Uh, There's a lot of concepts here. Okay, so this is good. I, I just can get I can get the I want to be able to get a, just a, a really nice simple raw text representation of the current editor. So I suppose that's state docs. So let's do that. So let's have it that our dispatch transaction is going to say so, um stir uh, content. Wonder if that will work. That's what Copilot suggested, that's not what I was gonna do, but let's just see what that gives us fragment okay so maybe that's just uh, just the piece of content that's been edited so maybe the the whole content is what was it state dot doc dot two string So let's see what that gives us. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it doesn't give us the content, it gives us a representation of the the dock shape. So if I create enter and do this. Hmm. Oh well. Maybe not. Right, that will become more clear selection, yes, that will come there'll come a time for that. More about transactions. I'm gonna start trying some things here. So this is just a test repository, so I'm gonna start it's a playground, so I'm gonna start adding some buttons maybe to to try out some features. So let's add a button for inserting content into the into the editor so let's have button to test inserting text into editor that'll do so we're going to create a listener for this button in our main file here so let's say uh, const insert button yep it's going to be that and then we're going to have insert button a listener and this is where we're going to insert text to the editor Oh, um, Copilot is suggesting some things here. Let's see if see what happens here. Right, let's uh, add a bit more space here. Oh well, look at that. There we go. So inserting text is working. Let's just see how that's working. So Copilot has suggested that what you do is you view dot state dot transaction. I, I said yeah, that will stand for. Okay, that's simple enough. And then you call dispatch. What happens if you don't call dispatch? I presume nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens. 
That's cool. Pretty happy with this so far. So, what's the next thing to experiment with? Let me check my list. Done the create test repo, getting and setting text. So we we are input we're inserting text there. This is sort of a proof proof of concept. Uh, can we get the current state of the editor? So current content. Hmm, don't want to do that. Let's see what this gives us. Yeah, well, we can get the current state of the whole, the whole thing. That might not be what we want to do. We might want a, a more structured representation. I wonder how that's going to turn out. Um, okay, so. So we've got this uh, yeah, insert text, state dot apply is another way to do it. It looks like you create a transaction, or you call transaction. Okay, you can do apply and then you have the new state. So let's see more about this state object. So editor state, I'm going to go to the definition here. So we've got a class editor state it has the doc, which is a node. What I'm going to have, I'm going to have a button, which prints all, or just a, a log of all of the state that I'm interested in. So let's have at an ID um, log state. log state. Ideally I'll have it actually come onto the screen. So yeah, let, let's do that. Let's do that. So underneath I'm going to have a uh, div ID called state log and what I'm going to do is create a listener for that. So uh, it's going to be the log state button. And when it's clicked, oh, and we also need the, the state log container. State log, log state button. Is that what I've called it? log state is, is fine. Here, yeah, log aspects of the state to the state log container. Well, let's see what Copilot will have us log here. Mm, it's going to carry on low with loads of selection size at the moment. So let's uh, let's now get that into the container. Hmm, don't feel like I could do it that way. I could do uh, state log list state log html let's have okay let's have a list um let's have an object of key values that we can render so state data like this and then we'll have it like that and then we're going to basically map through those check dot 
keys.statedata.map. Yeah, and we're going to have uh, something like this. And then a dot join. That needs a const. And then we set it. So now, why is this complaining? Implicit any. I can tell you it is any. So now, let's see what happens here. Okay. So let me uh, just make this a little nicer. So the state log div is going to have a bit more about it. Let's uh, can we make it sort of look variably? Let's have the font family as monospace. Yeah, and let's have a bit more margin top separate it from the butts up above. That's kind of cool. Uh, maybe we can bold this the key uh, maybe a uh, colon yeah All right, and uh, let's yeah, let's. I don't. I don't really want this empty box though. So maybe I'll just uh, remove the the border for now. Yeah, this is handy. This is helpful. So let's get it actually. Uh, putting out some useful stuff. So I don't actually mind about all of this selection stuff for now. But let's get the content uh, somewhat working. So we said that the content I'm surprised that's not not working. Well actually it's, it is working. There we go. Didn't have any content. Alright so that's the content what else do we care about? Is there some kind of other representation of it that that I want to be able to see? So let's uh, let's go back to the definition of the the state object. So we've got the doc. Let's have a look what that looks like. So. We're going to let's see the so state dot doc. This becomes that. And what happens if I, you know, log the doc doc to the screen? It's probably not going to be too helpful. Yeah, doc paragraph. Is that a string or is that actually some kind of object? Let's it's a node. So if I go to the definition of the node, yeah, it has all kinds of handy things in it. Yeah, I can get the content. Mm, I'll have marks. Let's have uh, now for now that the marks I think will be nothing, but let's. Let's have the marks. Doc dot marks. Yeah, it'd be empty for now, but I think uh, I think that'll be interesting to see. So I'm going to print the stored marks as well. 
I'm going to do the two JSON as well to see what that's like. So stored marks and JSON. Stringify. Have to make that a string. So let's uh, Okay, yeah, this is nice. So we've got a paragraph with this content. So now if I create another paragraph, then now in my JSON I have two paragraphs. Yeah, I like to present this a bit in with uh, some uh, indenting, so. Ideally, what about if I put this in a pre? That's a bit more readable. Yeah, this is uh, it's good. Okay. So, is there anything else that jumps out? So, creating the 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 state from JSON that's 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 nice. So that's that's our serializ serialization and parsing going to be taken care of, hopefully. All right, so um, got selection objects. All right, okay. I'm fairly satisfied with this. So I think the next thing is to try out the maybe the the marks and the schema. I feel like we should get a, a little test in for that. So let me take this this example they've got here and try and you know another thing we could do is well, this uh, this reference might be interesting to look at actually. But there's all, there's more examples, including the Markdown rendering example, which I do want to have a look at. Okay, this is just a nice reference. And are there any interesting things to see here? The schema basic schema so it allows these various elements i suppose i don't have any of these available to me right now so i could play with that i don't really care about the use case of having the user make too much in the way of formatting but i do want to be able to have the capability to inject content which has a certain style and that's different from the user's base style and I, I would quite like them to be able to you know render a header or a subheading or a, a list even it's not absolutely necessary but worth testing now see they've got these list ideas here in prose mirror so that might be I'm going to spare myself that for now I need to figure out what this I think this mark idea is what I am looking for okay these are the types of node defined in this schema 
So can I create my own node, which is a span with a certain ID? That's what I'm I'm wondering how to do. That's the next thing I want to to get done here. So I want to be able to insert something of a certain type. So first of all, let's define the uh, the schema that uh, comes with those different types. Here's a simple schema that supports strong and emphasis marks. Okay, this will this will be enough to to get going with. Oh dear. Okay. I need to import schema. And then when we create the state, we are having the the mark schema. So, so now if I go to my playground, insert some text, nothing happens. Do we have an error? So there's no two DOM function. Now we read a little bit about this. What that's saying to me is I'm trying to I'm trying to programmatically insert this text, but if I need to, if I'm gonna do that then the schema needs to have a to DOM method to tell it how to render that, which is that makes sense. So let's find an example of this. So I'm in the references, there are two DOM, so let's uh node spec. So the node needs to have a two DOM. So where does that go? Does it go in here? Maybe they all need it. Okay, we need to find a good example of this. I've seen it around. To be able to edit the easiest way is so include two DOM, yeah, two DOM in the in the schema. So P O declares that the paragraph is rendered as a P and the zero is the whole where its content should be rendered. But you may also include an object with HTML attributes. That's good. That's what I want to do. because I want to have a a span dot suggestion and it's going to have a certain background color let's say so I want, let's say, my 
following that example in my paragraph. Well, let's see if this, this works without error, first of all. Yeah. So let's have a button for, okay, now, now I want to, let's just test the, the class thing. So if I say this is now a span classes suggestion that might not be the syntax, but let's see. So you do, so it's an array with the type and then the, okay, class, not classes. There we go. That is correct. And now I'm typing more stuff and it's carrying on with the same. That's, that's as expected. Because this is our basic paragraph. So this, this we want to have somewhere else. This is just going to be, let's say, basic, basic paragraph. And now, now we want something special. Where does it go? Can I put it in here? Suggestion? Or is that not going to be a valid type? Because it doesn't actually exist. I'm just making it up. Well, we haven't got any errors yet. Now, how do I insert something of that type? Let's have a button for insert suggestion. And now we've got to set up those listeners, insert suggestion button. And now our listener. Okay, this is interesting, what's been suggested here. So we're creating a transaction, replace selection with. Now I don't want to do that, but that's interesting to know that that's there. I should look at all the different types of transaction there are. So if I go to, hold on a minute. There we go. Yeah, so let's, let's just see all the transactions that there are. So, is that going to be under transform? Yeah. So if we've got replacing, add mark step, add a mark between two positions. Add a mark to a specific node. What about? What about just adding a? Appending. An editor straight can be applied to a state using an up can apply to a state to create an updated state. Use editor.tr. It's the transaction type. So here we are at the transaction type. And I can add a mark. I can insert text. with a text node containing the given string. Hmm. 
Okay, so I could I can I can insert the text and then add a mark around it. by so inserting the text and then add a mark to the content between two positions. Hmm. So that's a possibility. So actually this would be a mark. My suggestion would be a mark. Hmm. It's not quite clear yet. Let's uh, let's go to the examples and see if we can find. Oh, I'm definitely going to check out this markdown example because this might might lead us forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 nice. I want this. So and it'd be interesting to see how it how it does it in the schema. Defines a prose mirror schema that it can express exactly the things that can be expressed in markdown. Create a simple interface. Mm -hmm. So creating state with the default markdown parser. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I like this. I like this. So. Hmm. So let's check this and just see how they've done the schema. Schema. These are the nodes. So these are the things you can have in Markdown. And this is how they are each parsed and so forth. Hmm. Yeah, so I do think what I'm looking for for my suggestion text is a mark. But maybe that's more of a UI thing. Maybe it shows marks as part of the menu or something. Oh, I see. So I could do insert text, but I insert I insert the thing that's going to be parsed potentially. So the heading, how's that working? How is that working? Because I am. How does it know to turn the the hash into the 
Okay, so this is where it, this is where the magic happens. Mark serializer spec. Hmm. Default markdown serializer. Let's look at the heading. So this is to Markdown, okay, so I'm going to go from Markdown. And I want to find how they do the headings. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's in here then. This seems like this, this is going the other way. This is create the hashes for each. If I look for hash. Hmm. So what's what's happening here? So if I search this whole I want to search this repository, how do I do that? is a mystery. All right, well, I think a break is in order. Made some good progress with this. Yeah. I'm going to insert a suggestion. So I think extending the markdown serializer to have a, a special symbol for the suggestion type could work well. Something like, you know, some some symbols to represent the the beginning and the end of a suggestion span, and then everything else will work just like the markdown serializer works. So maybe that's what I'll try and do next, is to extend that markdown example and add my own special type. Or not even that, or just use a markdown type like bold to represent the suggested text. That might be the way forward. All right. Going offline.